When you're deployed on board an aircraft carrier, there are no Cheetos, there are no shops, and the only food you get are the meals served in the mess. Everyone on board eats the same food, but it's a little more complicated than just cooking the food. It all starts with the 21-day cycle menu. Once created, the meals repeat every 21 days. The menu is created by a professional chef working for the U.S. Navy. Once created, this determines the shipping and delivery of food supplies on board. Every menu of an aircraft carrier is loaded into the FSM and the purchasing of products for delivery is dictated by this menu. The menu can be changed, but they don't do this often because it complicates the logistics. Of course, during holidays such as Thanksgiving or the 4th of July, there are exceptions to the schedule. However, these are just that, exceptions. Then they go on the website of the Food Service Management System, or FSM for short, and they order their food. The food comes from a variety of sources, and officers can choose any suppliers that are on the website. Just like ordering online, the FSM website works the same way. This means the aircraft carrier pays for all of the food they purchase. Basic Daily Food Allowance BDFA, is used to define the amount of food required to feed a single person for a day. This is usually calculated in dollars. The Department of Defense sets the BDFA every year in a document called the NAV SUP 7330. They then count the number of sailors on board the aircraft carrier and multiply that by the BDFA dollar amount. This determines how much food each soldier receives. For example, let's say there are 5,000 sailors on board the USS Nimitz, and the BDFA is set at $15, a rough estimate for the month of September 2022. In that case, the USS Nimitz would smash that like button, just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, the USS Nimitz would get $75,000 for food for the day. But what about overspending problems? In the military, if the officers spend more money on food than is allocated to them by BDFA, they have an over-issue. Doing this for extended periods will blow out their budget. Similarly, when they spend less than they're allocated each day, they have a problem. The problem is called under-issue. You might think that they're saving money, but it means they're not feeding the crew the nutritious food required to sustain them. The goal? The idea scenario would be to have no food money left over at the end of the year. In other words, the annual food budget equals the annual food expenses. But how does all this food and groceries get on board the aircraft carrier? Obviously, they can't dock the carrier every 21 days, right? Of course not. That'd limit the aircraft carrier's range. At any time, they would have to be only 11 days away from land in their voyage. That's inefficient. To make it efficient, they have supply delivery. Basically, there are two types of replenishments. One is vertical replenishment. That's when supplies are delivered on deck by a supply helicopter. Although fast, relatively few supplies are delivered using this method because it's expensive. Underway replenishment is when a supply vessel, another ship, sails right next to the aircraft carrier and delivers supplies on deck via cables and pulleys. Once the raw groceries hit the deck, they need to be stored. The different types of foods need to be stored differently. That's usually done in walk-in fridges, freezers, and giant pantries or dry storerooms. All of these storage units are locked. The keys are held by a responsible custodian that tracks where the food is going. As you might have already supposed, the ocean waves make things move on board a carrier. That's why all of the utensils and cooking equipment need to be secured in place. Then we walk into the galley. The word kitchen is never used on an aircraft carrier. This is where the staff prepares up to 18,000 meals every day. To prepare the food, the Ford-class carriers operate two galleys. However, the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier needs to operate five of them. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner are all served at particular times during the day. The crew eats in different areas depending on their rank. 
The enlisted crew occupies the mess decks during mealtime, chiefs eat in the chief's mess, and the officers eat in the wardroom. The commanding officer has their own mess. They might be divided when eating, but the same 21-day food menu served to everyone on board, including the commanding officer. Prepping, cooking, and serving the food is referred to as smashing that subscribe button and ringing that notifications bell. But no, in all seriousness, it's referred to as food service operation, and it even has its own ranks and titles, and a chain of command must be maintained at all times. The FSO, or food service officer, is the person in charge of the food service inventory. There's also the supply officer, whose role is assumed by the FSO on smaller aircraft carriers. A records keeper reports directly to the FSO. All the food needs to be accounted for properly. Receiving and issuing are done using special forms. This makes tracking consumption and ordering new food that much easier. The leading culinary specialist, or LCS for short, is the head of the entire food service operation. Beneath the LCS are the galley captains, several of which exist on board an aircraft carrier. Each is assigned their own galley. The watch captain is the next in line of command in the galley. They also do the cooking on board. When it comes to serving food, random sailors are assigned to the food service operation. The food service attendants help run the galley and mess operations smoothly. The mess deck master at arms is a person whose sole responsibility is to ensure the safety of the mess decks. With the chain of command in place, cooking the food should be simple, but it isn't. Cooking three meals a day, every day for 5,000 people takes careful planning and preparation. Not only should the food look and taste good, but it should also be nutritious. Cooking instructions are provided for the personnel before they begin cooking. For detailed cooking instructions, they consult the MillTube website. Standard recipe cards are given to each of the personnel members before cooking the food. There's not a lot of guesswork in cooking. The FSM3 website gives specific instructions on the quantity of food chefs need to prepare to feed every sailor on board. In other words, they know exactly how many pizzas to make for 5,000 people. The popularity of each meal is taken into account too. More popular meals are served more frequently in the hopes of boosting morale. Because food contributes to the morale on board the aircraft carrier, nurturing food is a key factor on board an aircraft carrier. Bye for now.